Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The devil is vicious and he's out to destroy your ministry. All the forces that come against us are satanic, James 4, 7. When the devil attacked the Lord, he defended himself with the word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 11. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. When Satan assaulted the Lord, the Lord defended his ministry by the word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. When the Spirit, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards a hungered. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil take him up into the holy city on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charges concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. He fought the battle, the Lord fought the battle with the word of God. But we can't underestimate the power of the enemy. We don't want to overestimate the devil. We only want to underestimate him. Corrie ten Boom said the first stop of the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. So how do we defeat the enemy? How do we defeat the demonic forces? Well, we've already looked at the importance of the word of God. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And you all know this. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherein take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on you your shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching therein with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Put on the whole armor of God. Did you notice there, there is no retreat. When a Roman soldier had a shield and had a sword, they were not going to retreat, they were going to advance. The armor of God is given to you for you to advance and take en enemy ground. But you have to do it on the basis of God's resources. You can't do it as a minister in your own resources. You can't do it purely on apologetics, purely on your intellect purely on your know-how. You need the spiritual wisdom and spiritual equipment of God. Now I know you know this. We can do things in the flesh and not do them in the ministry of the Word and how God wants us to do it. If you have failed, welcome to the club. If we turn to Romans chapter 13 verse 12 to 14. Romans 13, Romans 13, 12 to 14, 
The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in cha chambering and wanderness, not in strife and saying, but ye put on, but put ye on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Let us put on Christ. We need the belt of truth. Are you feeling it? We need the belt of truth. Ephesians 6.14 We need to be willing to stand up for truth. Let's turn to Jude chapter uh, Jude verse 3. Jude verse 3 Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should err once deliver for the saints. We contend for truth. We fit ourselves with the gospel of peace, Ephesians 6, 19. We have faith, the shield of faith. We need faith in the ministry. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. If we don't have faith, we're going to sink. If we don't have faith, we're going to fall. If we don't have faith, we're going to be discouraged. We need faith. Faith to believe God is with us. Faith to believe God will give us strength. Faith to believe God will vanquish our enemies. Faith. We need faith. We need faith. Hebrews 11, 7. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. For by it elders obtained a good report. Through faith we read by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel appeared unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts by it being dead yet speaketh. Yeah, the whole chapter of 11 of Hebrews is by faith. Faith, as a mustard seed, can do great things. Matthew 17, 20. You need faith when you've sowed the seed to believe that God is going to bless it. Matthew 17, 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for I verily say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence and yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible. We've got to have faith. Faith is centered on Christ, Galatians 2.20. Faith rests on God, 1 Corinthians 2.5. 2, faith is precious, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. And faith is confident, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. We live by faith and not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And we could go on and on. Faith, you need faith. You need to also grasp salvation. If you're not in love with the gospel, if you're not in love with Christ, then what are you doing as a minister? Have you got so bogged down in reading theology books that you've lost the joy of your salvation? Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. But let us... Who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and of the helmet for the helmet and helmet. Here it is. The hope, the hope of salvation. Have a good grasp of the gospel for that will give you strength. Then you need the armor of the word of God. 
You need to hide the word of God in your heart. Psalm 119 verse 11. Oh, this is a wonderful, 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 wonderful. Psalm 119 verse 11. Are you feeling your privilege, brother? Psalm 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not. The word of God is flawless. Proverbs 30 verse 5. The word of God is God breathed. 